In this project, we're going to attempt to create the three visible surfaces of a block. Call it a toy block, if you will, but I'd also call your attention that in almost any given Yellow Pages, if you flip through, you'll see 10 to 12 companies use this for their use this graphic for their logo with possibly a company with three letters in it so you might find this very useful but this does bring up some very interesting some very complex things that we can do in Corel that might be applied to other graphics as well it'll leave some questions unanswered there's many ways you can do this wrong and very often when I am in a seminar, I ask advanced users, what's the smallest number of curves that could possibly be in this graphic? We'll try to answer this by the end of this project. When starting to recreate any graphic, I always suggest look for the most global, the most primitive graphic within the objects you're trying to recreate. Probably the most obvious here is not the one we want. We see some skewed rectangles, and we could indeed just take some squares and skew them and angle them and rotate them and possibly put this together, but I don't think it's the simplest solution. If you'll look a little outside the box, no pun intended, you'll see that this is really shaped by a polygon, that is, a hexagon, a six-sided polygon. So that's where we're going to start. Let's grab this object, move it up to the size so we can use it for a reference later on, and start creating a hexagon. I'm going to click the polygon tool, and let's make six sides in that. I'm going to hold start from the center, therefore I'll hold down the shift key and the control key to be sure we form a equilateral polygon. So we'll stretch that out about the height of the page. For no good reason, press P to put that in the middle of it. And then we'll get to work on it. So there's the outside of our graphic. I'm going to be sure that I have Snap to Objects turned on. It is indeed turned on, so we're ready to proceed with that. I'm going to go then to the Bezier tool, and we'll start creating these sides. I'm going to click on that node, and we're going to find the center point. That's why I needed that Snap to Objects turned on. We'll snap to the center, and then work our way on around. Just so I know I've got a closed shape, I'm going to color that, and we'll uh, start on another side. Before I create that third and final side, I'm going to color the hexagon red. Matter of fact, if I had thought of it, I would have done that as soon as I created the object. But now, just to illustrate here, I've created that, I've made the whole hexagon red. We'll undo that and put that back there. Now we're going to go, back, go ahead and create our final side. So we'll make our five points around here. And we'll fill that with uh, possibly a dark blue. And then we'll get to work with putting our letters on here. I'm going to put my caps lock on and type in A, B, C. I'm going to select those and let's put that possibly in Arial Black. And then I'm going to break that apart with Arrange and break Artistic Text apart. Or Control K would have done the same quicker and then we'll get to work on that we're going to use this green as an envelope for our a so that would be effects envelope that'll call up our envelope docker and i'm going to tell it that i would like to create an envelope from this green part and then i'm going to apply that 
We'll uh, hold down the control, tap the space bar to select that, and then move that in here about where we want it. And it looks like about 18 points would reduce that to about the right size. We'll remember that on our other two parts. We'll just kind of visually place that where it should be. Now we'll work on the C. We'll use the light blue as an envelope. Apply that. We decided 18. And finally, our B. Notice it's uh, snapping to the center of that part and won't let me put it quite where I want it. Therefore, I need to turn that snap to objects off so that doesn't fight with me. Then I can move that wherever I choose to. Now, what I've learned for what we want to do, we're going to select that covering for the top surface. We created that shape only so we'd have an envelope. I'm going to delete that now, which shows the color of our of our root hexagon. Then we're going to select all of those and combine them. And there we have our project completed. But do note, if you were asking yourself how many what is the minimum number of curves, let me call to your attention that down here we have the absolute minimum number of curves for this project is one. A relatively complex graphic completely made with one curve. And look at some of the versatility of this. Let's select that, change it to blue. Project complete.